Okay, let's have a look at the calligraphy option in the satin outline. So if we go into the object properties for the satin outline, so I'll just right click on the satin outline, which will open up the object properties for that tool. You can see down on the bottom right here that there's an option for calligraphy and you have an option to set an angle. The default is 45. So if I select that, I can change, then change the angle if I so desire. I'm going to leave it on 45 and go up OK just to get that off the screen for you. Now, you can use the open objects for this tool to create lines and you can use the standard open object in which case you will need to left and right click to make your shape. So if I select my open object and come down to the satin because I've already set up that calligraphy in the object properties it will default to that now. So if I left click, right click, left click and you can see I've made a curve here so part of this line is going in this direction part of it's going up and we've got a 45 degree angle part here now I'll go enter and you can see here if I zoom in a bit that we've got a thicker line going to a thinner line going back to a thicker line now the thickness of the line is also determined by the object properties so let's have a look at those I can select that in the color film and right click to get to my object properties quickly so the width of my satin is three millimeters and if I change that to four and apply it thickens it up a little bit but we still get very thin here because the stitches are all going in a 45 degree angle and they're following the digitizing line let's have a look at the reshape tool while we've got that selected and you can see I've got one curved line here let's go out of true view and turn off the needle points so we can see clearly the digitizing line is running through the middle because I'm in reshape here. Um, and when it gets to this point, the, the stitches are still going at that angle. So that's where you get this thin and thick line, depending on what shape you draw. So let's just zoom out again a bit and try a different shape. So we'll select and click off and we'll go with the open object again and I'm going to left click, right click, left click, right click, left click and enter. And as you can see here I start thick, go thin, get thick again start thick, go thin and get thick again so that shape is repeating because I'm basically drawing the similar line let's go into true view and I've got a four width but I'm drawing quite large objects because once again I haven't got my grid on so I have no idea these are quite large lines big sweeping lines so one two three four five six seven that's seven centimeters across so um, quite a big line let's undo those and you can see you can get some really good effects but let's undo those and let's create one with the open freehand. I'll just take that grid off again. So with the open freehand, if you watched my last video, you can use your mouse. And I'm going to try and use my mouse first up and then I'll grab my pen. So um, you're not going to actually plot left and right clicks. You're just going to... Put your left mouse button down, hold it down, and drag your mouse to draw. So left click down, and you can see it's quite wonky. <laughs> I'm trying to do a, a letter C. So it is a bit harder to control, but with practice, you can do smaller lines and just control it 
and practice. And of course, use your smoothing up here if you need to, to smooth it out a bit. You don't want to get too aggressive with the smoothing because you can um, find it difficult to get your points if you want points. But as you can see, you can be quite creative with this tool. Now I'll grab my pen, so I'll just delete all of those. And I'll go OK on that dialog box to get rid of it. And I will start to write my name. Now I am trying to work around a microphone as, as well, so bear with me. But let's see how we go. Whoops, it would help if I got the tool. So I want an open object and I want the satin. And I've still got that set on calligraphy. So, oh, I've got the, I need the open freehand object. So let's try again. That's better. You can see that you can sign your name with a calligraphy style. So if you do have a pen tablet, you can be much more creative. But that doesn't mean to say you can't create lovely calligraphy designs without using a pen. So I have been playing with the pen because I'm enjoying that so much. But let's have a look at a couple of designs that it would be possible to do with your mouse and clicking if you um, don't want to get a tablet. So let's open my recent designs and let's have a look at this Christmas tree. Okay, so... There's quite a few shapes in here. Um, actually, I'll um, open the heart as well. All right. So here's a heart. Now, to do that, I'll get my open object and my satin I've got. And let me get a pink color. Okay. So... If I want to digitize over that, actually, let's get a, a blue color. You could have a shape of a heart that you put in as a backdrop to trace over. I'm just going to use the design I've already got. So let me make a green heart just for the sake of it so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to left click, right click, right click. And I'm going through the middle because that is the original digitizing line of this shape. And I'll left click down there. Now, I didn't go right round the heart. And I'll show you why. I'll do one right round the heart first. So if I go back up here. I might have done for this one, actually. Let's see what happens. Enter. Okay. For some reason, it didn't seem to do the calligraphy. Let's select that double check oh because I've opened a new design so I haven't got calligraphy um, so I need to apply that and apply that's better okay so let's drag that off so you can digitize with it set up beforehand or you can change it afterwards and as you can see I've got one very similar by clicking through the same sort of lines so I've got a thin bit here a thin bit here everywhere where the angle is 45 degrees and um, in this direction I've got thin lines everywhere it's going in the opposite direction I've got thicker lines so imagine doing lots of scrolls um, and patterns like that. Now, sometimes it's not desirable to go right round a shape because you want something to look a bit symmetrical. So I'll go back to my Christmas tree and let me just digitize one of these shapes. So I've got, um, I'll get my open object and the satin outline and I'll choose red this time so we can digitize over the top and I'll just do this first object so I started there so you could get any picture of a Christmas tree and do this around the outside and what I did was when I got to the center
I stopped. And enter. And again, I haven't got calligraphy. Come on, Carol. Get yourself organised. Apply. Oh, I need to select the object. Calligraphy. And apply. Okay, so that's basically the shape I did for the outside. Let's drag that off. And then I, because if I'd have gone right round, let me do one where I go right round. So I've got calligraphy, right, we're all good. So, oh. open object, calligraphy, satin, yep. All right, let's start. Let's go right round and I'll show you why I only went halfway. Just bear with me. Sorry about this. Clicking around. I actually drew this with my pen, so um, clicking around does is starting to become tedious for me but I it is you very useful when you need to do accurate really accurate lines enter right so as you can see this side of the tree went nice but the other right hand side didn't um, because I was coming down this way it's the opposite to 45 so it's thicker rather than having the thin here so everywhere where it was um, the opposite direction it went thicker so I didn't get the same look as if I'd have selected this half tree and mirror merge horizontal then I can bring in an exact um, I don't want to merge the overlapped objects either because that will change the angles. So I'll go no. And then I get the exact same on both sides of the tree. And then I just created um, freehand um, shapes. But you could click around as well to create an echo sort of stitching. But I didn't have, I didn't use any outline tools or anything. I just did a guess because I didn't want it to be too... Um, similar I wanted a bit of randomness between the lines going to get my pen and just draw some curvy shapes so you can get some ideas of some things you can do so um, I need to get the tool open freehand satin and I've got the red color still so that will work let's just make some tick shapes And you can um, rotate these shapes too. So if if I wanted to um, do a petal outline and then I went to my next petal and I didn't like that, I wanted more this um, solid line on the bottom and thin up both sides. So to get thin up both sides, I have to be running at a 45 degree angle. So let me just... Um, this is about 45 right so 45 and then I'm going to come around here and then I'm going to go back up at 45 and that gives me um, a thin line on both sides so instead of trying to draw another petal I can mirror merge that so let's select it and move it into its own space Okay, and let's read that. Um, so, mirror merge, get a wreath. Let's do five and five. Now, I want to overlap those because those are such lightly stitched lines. Now it's come up, do I want to merge? Because I overlap them. No, I don't. Because these are such lightly stitched lines, you can actually um, stitch over the top of each other. It'd just be like, um, it's almost like running stitch going over the top of itself in different directions. 
So I hope that's inspired you to have a play with the calligraphy tool. And those of you with a pen tablet, you can have have um, a play with that as well. But those of you who haven't, try drawing curves with your mouse. Otherwise, you can use the ordinary open object tool to draw lines. Um, you can use the closed object tool as well. That will work, but your results might not be as nice as you want.